Well, hello, Kim185 team, or whoever's watching this, right? We're going to be looking at pipettes, right? Pipette instructions. So we did not use these in first semester of general chemistry at Orange Coast College, but we will be for several experiments for Chem 185. So it's definitely something we want to get the technique down. And it's one of the skills we want you to learn because there's uh, a big, there's two unknowns actually that are going to be directly dependent on your pipetting skills. No. <laughs> so again, uh, it, uh, from the locker uh, supplies video, we had transfer or volumetric pipettes. This happens to be a five uh, milliliter one. You also have a 10 milliliter one. And again, those are good to two decimal places. Um, so 5.00 milliliters, that would be one aliquot. So if you fill it up to the uh, line, which a lot of times is hard to see, right? There's a little white line right where my finger is. If you get the solution meniscus bottom directly on that little white line there, that's going to be 5.00 milliliters, and that's the key. Uh, and you can transfer that uh, 5.00 milliliters from some stored solution and spray it, you know, dispense it into a flask or a test tube or whatever, wherever it's going at the time. Uh, or you can do a 10.00 milliliter aliquot, and we're going to be calibrating our 10 mil one. Um, there's some cute ones that are one and a lot of different sizes. Uh, and then you also have a measuring pipette which you record the initial volume, drain out however much you need, record the final volume, uh, and then you can calculate the volume, uh, final volume minus the initial volume to get the change in volume, which is the volume dispensed from that one. So that's a measuring pipette where you can do variable volumes. So we're going to mo be mostly using these um, uh, transfer or volumetric pipettes. The key now on the instructions here talks about, you know, what to do with all of them. Of course, anytime you're putting a new solution in, you want to, uh, you know, because, you know, if I have a solution in here, it's coated. Even if I drain it out, it's coated with a little bit of the liquid, a little layer of that uh, solution from whatever was the prior liquid in it, whether that was DI water or an unknown, unknown solution or a known solution, doesn't matter. But you can't just drain, you know, suck up into it a new solution because that'll, mix with the surface layer and contaminate it. So you always want to condition it with four rinses of the new solution going in. So if I did, a, if this is DI water, I'm going to condition it with this, drain up four bits, put it into a waste beaker, right? You don't want to pull up a little bit of it, you know, shake it up and put it back into the source solution and, and then you diluted it, right? So you'll have a waste, a waste beaker where you can dispense um, rinsings from conditioning. If it was another solution, I would probably clean that out with DI water, get all that solution out, and then I would condition that four times with this new solution to get that DI water out, replace it with a, a coating of this new solution that's in there. You could clean these out with DI water, hook it up to an aspirator, which we have on, on our sinks here, uh, like a vacuum, and you could uh, you know dry it out that way if it needs to be dry. But you should usually be able to condition it, but always check your instructions, right? So make sure your pipette's clean, make sure it's conditioned. Those are the first two things on there. Kind of important, right? Uh, and then, so we've already done numbers one, two, and three. Now the technique, it's kind of like using burettes. There's a special technique and each one's a little bit different. Now we use the pain in the butt pipette bulbs from Chem 185. Um, chemists have to do things the hard way, right? Uh, so if you're at a university or in biology or whatever, they probably have those fancier contraptions where you can just set it on the top there. There's a little side button that you can just press and it'll, it'll suck solution up. If you let go, it holds it there. You press another button, it brings it down. So you can just bring it up and down and up and down, get it to where you want. Those are a piece of cake. Doesn't take a lot of skill to do those, but they're great if you're using those often um, or you have no desire to learn the skill. <laughs> but we're going to make you do it the hard way at Get 185. Now, one of the rules is you don't want to get liquid or solution into this bulb. So before I start every, anything, I'll always have a paper towel with me. So I'll you know, grab a paper towel. Let me grab one here. And what I'll do is I'll just check real quick. I'll squeeze it. Tap it, squeeze it, see if any liquid comes out. If it does, I'm going to keep squeezing it hard, tapping it, squeezing it hard until all that liquid comes out. You don't want to have any liquid up there and you put it on here and it dribbles down from the pipette bulb <laughs> into the pipette. That would be bad. I go, water in the hole, all right? So we don't want to do that. So always check and make sure you have liquid in there. And if you ever do get liquid in here, so if you set it on here and let go too fast, it can zhoop, 
and just suck right up the pipette into the bulb. You're like, ah! Right? And then you got to, you know, have the waste container, get rid of it, tap it out. You might have to rinse it out with water and do that. So it's a big pain in the butt. So be very, very careful not to get liquid or solution up in the bulb. Right? And the key aspect is we're going to squeeze this ahead of time. Don't set it on there and then squeeze it, right? Especially if you've got it inside. So say I have some solution or DI water, and if you've got that in there and you put it on and spray it, it's like blowing into a straw. It just you know, it bubbles on over. My son does that a lot. So my recommendation is to uh, squeeze it as hard as you can, set it on nice and snug before you put it in, all right? And check to make sure that this little white part isn't out, right? Because you can make sure it's nice and snug in there, no liquid in the bulb. And the, the key function of this is we're going to squeeze on that, set it on there nice and snug, set this in the liquid, and then don't just let go because it'll release the pressure and zoop, suck it up really, really fast. You want to bring the solution up really slow until you're about two, three, four centimeters above that line. Remember that line, that demarcation line there that we want to get the solution meniscus bottom on? So you want to bring it up above that. So if the line is here, I want to bring the solution up to about here. Right? So I'm going to pop that on there. I'm going to get the solution up. And once the solution's up to about here, I'm going to have my thumb or my finger ready to go. And I'm going to pull this off and put either my finger or my thumb on there to seal it like a straw. And it'll drop down a little bit when you do the switch. You put that off and pop it on there, it'll drop a little bit. That's why you want it about two to four centimeters above that little white line or whatever color that line is on there. But do that real quick. You'd be like, okay, it's draining up, draining up. It's two to four centimeters above the line. Let go plug it, right? So I can see. I like to use my thumb. I've heard people say you have more control with your forefinger. Whatever, <laughs> right? I like my thumb. Arthritis, right? It's hard. I have a broken pinky and arthritis, so I, I, I have to pick the one that doesn't hurt as bad. <laughs> okay. Actually, it's the tendon that's whacked out on the pinky now, the, the, the bone healed. Playing softball with people half your age doesn't end up well when you're at third base. So anyway, I've got the solution up there, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly roll my, f if you've got your finger, you're not going to just let go because it just, boom, it goes sailing down. So you're just going to find that sweet spot, like when you're driving a, a car with a clutch in it, there's that sweet spot where you're not, ka -dunk, ka -dunk, ka -dunk, right? There's that one sweet spot where you can shift gears and you don't even feel it. I practiced that for months. And so you're just going to roll your finger, or for my case, my thumb, I'm just going to roll it. It doesn't even look like I'm taking it up. I'm just slowly rolling it till I, I allow a little bit of air in there, and I can control it where it drops down real, real slow. You don't want to jump down in big old quantum jumps, right? You want a nice, continuous one. And when you get that meniscus bottom right on that line, boom, you seal it. If there's any drops on the end, tap those off, right? You don't want a drop hanging off the end that drops in there because then you have more volume than you need. So, you know, if there's a, too much on there, tap that any drops clinging. And then bring it over to the container you're transferring it to, pop it in there, let go, and drain it in. Of course, when you're draining it, you don't want to be up above. Get it down in there so you don't lose any. Hold it at an angle. We don't want to splash or anything. Hold it at an angle. Get it in there. Let go and let it drain into the container. Drip, drip, drip. You'll see it drip in there. And then you probably want to wait about 10 to 15 seconds, right? Because it takes time for some of that surface liquid to get out. You might see a little droplet come off on the end, and you can tap that out if necessary. All right? So make sure you've got your containers ready to go. It's always good to practice a little bit. So again, I'm going to squeeze this. I'm going to set that in there, set this on the top. And then you, and I'm, it, now watch my hand. It hardly looks like I'm moving my hand. You see that solution coming up? I'm barely. So it, it looks like this. I'm barely moving my finger. I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm just barely moving it and releasing the pressure. And it comes up pretty quick. So it from a, a, a distance, it doesn't look like I'm doing anything. And then I got my solution in there, right? And I'm up above that line. And then what I'm going to do is find that sweet spot. And you can use this brown line that's on there. You can rotate that around so you can see that, menis that demarcation line better. And then what I can do is just slowly, now if you watch that solution, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit here. You can watch me drain the solution out. Hold on a sec. There. So I'm going to just slowly move my thumb, and you'll, you want to get it where the solution starts dropping slow. It takes a while, right? It might take you a few tries. 
but you want to get it where it starts dropping real slow not super fast see that dropping there see how that's dropping right about there now that's dropping too fast right so I just let go when it comes out too fast so you want to get it where it's going real real slow so you can get that meniscus bottom right on that line so let me do it again remember squeeze it set it in barely move your your hand up it comes go at about two to four centimeters above that line whoops so I didn't quite make it all the way I lost my suction right sometimes you don't get a good seal you don't need to let it drain out all the way just take it off squeeze it again set it back on and up it comes and then I take it off I'm up above that demarcation line okay and then I'm just gonna slowly find that sweet spot I'm gonna roll my thumb a little bit, barely. I'm gonna get it where it's coming down nice and slow. This is tough when you got arthritis in your thumb. And you can get it coming down real slow. There, you find that sweet spot. That's why you wanna go two to four centimeters up above that line, until you find that sweet spot and slowly get it down until that meniscus bottom is right on that line and boop tap any drops off All right so if you get any if you got any drops off on the end tap it off All right so if i got a drop on the end i can tap that off and now i can take my storage container or whatever i'm transferring this aliquot into All right so i can move this over all right, so I can move this over. I've got it sealed. I've got my 5.00 milliliters. I'm going to pop that over there, and I'm just going to let go at an angle. And you can see it draining out. I'm going to let that come all the way down. Now this is manufactured TD or to deliver. So what's going to, now? I got a little drop hanging off the end there. I'm going to tap that off. All right. And then I'm going to count about 10 to 15 seconds because, again, sometimes that surface liquid takes a while to come on down. You might see a little droplet form or a half a drop. You can tap that off. But there's going to be a little bit of liquid. There's a little tiny bit of liquid right there at the end that doesn't come out. Right? Don't spray that out. Don't spray that out. Try to get that in there. Leave that in there. When you see a little TD on here, I don't know if you can read it from there, but there's a little TD on there means to deliver. So this has been manufactured to deliver 5.00 milliliters with that still in there. Okay, now if the droplet's on the outside, you tap that off like I just did. But leave that in there. And now we've got what we think is 5.00 milliliters. Now we could calibrate this and make sure it's, it's 5.00 on the dot. But that would be a 5.00 milliliter aliquot, right? So again, you calibrate, you know, condition it, collect the, the waste rinsings into there, and then I've conditioned this so I can do as many as I want now. So I can take this solution and I can do five milliliter aliquots and, until my, my thumb falls off, right? Um, so I just wanted to make sure you, you got the feel. This is just one of those things you have to do to get a feel for it. You can't just jump into a car that has a clutch and have never driven a clutch before and expect to have a nice, smooth experience. You're gonna be like, don't, 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 stall it a few times, <laughs> right? But once you got it, you got it, right? It's, and, and, and you get pretty good. But it's gonna, you know, there might be a few swear words while you're practicing, okay? But you always wanna practice with DI water. I just use this solution because you can see it, right? If I was using DI water, you wouldn't be able to see it inside here real well. And I can't really zoom in on that. A white line there so you'll see it when you get in there you get two to four centimeters above it drain it down just barely if you're using your finger you just barely break the seal and it comes down but usually when you first start like with a clutch it's jumping all you boom you let you you, you moved your finger too much and it drops down below the line well just catch it again suck the solution two to four centimeters above find that sweet spot drain it down real slow and seal it when that meniscus bottom's right on that demarcation line right so that's why it says this is the tough part <laughs> now when you're all done um, you know so if I'm all done and I've got my aliquots I can you know put stoppers in those and whatnot this has a layer of uh, solution from whatever this orange thing was I don't want to just leave that in there I want to clean that out so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a, a small beaker all right so I'll find a small beaker grab some of my DI water and what I'll do is I can put that in this beaker 
So I'm just going to pour some of this into the beaker here. And then I can just condition it with the DI water and put that into my waste container here. And it's also good practice, right? So I'm going to pop that in there, squeeze that, drain up the water. Didn't get a good seal on that one. All right, bring it over, drain that out. That little white thing was coming out, so I'm going to smash that back on there. And make sure the pipette isn't smashed onto the bottom. You don't want to clink the bottom of it, right? You can chip the pipette, and it's hard to get liquid out. So it needs to be up a little bit, right? There we go. So I can bring that up, drain a little bit out. And what I can do is I can get it to where it's about half filled in that bulb there. And then I can kind of move that around. I can let go with my thumb, drain it up into here, shake that up like you're playing a maraca or something. Drain that out. And you want to do four rinses with that, right? And this is how you condition something in the beginning as well. And then pop it. I wasn't, I wasn't getting any liquid up because that seal was off between this white plastic part and this. So I'll pop that in again, bring up another bit. About halfway so I can clean out that bulbous part, let go with my thumb, bring it up in there, roll it around. So I would do that four times and then that's conditioned. I can just leave that in my drawer and that'll air dry out by the next time I come in. Okay, so it's one thing to watch me do it. It's another to do it yourself. But um, we're going to record. I'm going to uh, record some other labs right now that use the pipettes. So at least I don't have to include this part in there. I'm just going to jump, use the pipettes, and hopefully you've seen this video so you can see why I'm doing what I'm doing. So there you go, team. Rock and roll.